Hi, this is lesson 1.1, Solving Simple Equations. You should be on page 4. In this lesson, you will learn three things. You're going to learn to solve linear equations using addition and subtraction. You will learn to solve linear equations using multiplication and division. And you will also learn to solve, or to use linear equations, I should say, to solve real life problems. We will start with important vocabulary. You learned in the introduction chapter that vocabulary, if you know the terminology, a lot of the things you are being asked to do is pretty simple. So we're going to start to make sure we know what these terms mean. An equation is a statement that two expressions are equal. So when I think of the word equation, I think of, the, I think of equal. So here would be a simple equation. You can see 1 plus 2 equals 3. That would be an example of an equation. This sign has an important meaning. It says the left side and the right side have the equivalent value. A linear equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals 0, where a and b are constants and a is not 0. Now when you read that, it sounds kind of technical and it might be confusing. It's, let me speak in a non-teacher way real quick here. First of all, the word linear, you notice the word line in it. A linear equation is an equation that would make a straight line graph. That's why it's called linear. And a linear equation in one variable, it says it can be written in this form. Let me give you a simple example of that form. It would be something like, let's say, 4x plus 12 equals 0. They're telling you that if we have a linear equation, we can definitely write it in this form. Okay, where we have some number times x plus or minus a number equaling 0. Now a solution to this equation is a value that makes it true. Like in this example that I just made up, if I put negative 3 in for x, 4 times negative 3 would give me negative 12, and negative 12 plus 12 does equal 0, so x equals negative 3 would definitely be a solution to this linear equation I made up. And then finally, inverse operations. Inverse operations are two operations that will undo each other, and such as addition and subtraction. Maybe I ought to make a little list of those. And as you can see here, these are all examples of inverse operations, like addition and subtraction undo each other. Multiplication and division undo each other. And square and square roots undo each other. When you perform the same operation on each side of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. So I think let's just do a quick example, something really simple like x plus 5 equals 7. To solve this, I would take away 5 from each side, and I know you've done this before, x would equal 2. Now, let me take my highlighter out. This term equivalent equations, these two equations that I'm highlighting in pink are equivalent. Here's why. This is the definition. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. Well, look, here, 2 would be the solution. 2 would equal 2. If I plug a 2 up here, 2 plus 5 would equal 7, which is true. So can you see, both of these equations have the same solution. They are equivalent. If you are doing your step work right, you will always get equivalent equations. That's why this term is important. Two properties that help us accomplish solving linear equations are the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. These are two very simple properties. The addition property of equality states that if you add the same number to each side of an equation, 
you will get an equivalent equation. Okay, so a quick example of that. X minus 2 equals 4. I think you already know the answer is 6, but let's show the work to, to prove it's 6. Well, the inverse of subtracting is adding, <coughs> so I would get X equals 6. You notice when I add the same amount to each side, I still get a true statement. I get an equivalent equation. That's what this property is saying. The subtraction property of equality is the same idea, it's except if you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation. You saw that on the previous slide. Here, let me take my highlighter out and I'll use green. I use the subtraction property of equality right here. I subtracted the same thing from each side, left and right of my equal sign, and it produced an equivalent equation. One teaching point that I have had a lot of success with um, regarding helping students understand equation solving, I have right here. If you treat your equation like an onion, think of an onion for a second. An onion has layers. To get to the center of the onion, you would peel one layer away at a time till you meet the center. Equations are the same way. If you think of the variable as the center of the onion and you peel from outside in, it will force you to do your step work right. Here is an example of that in the sample problem. We have x minus 3 equals negative 5. Okay? So think of x as the center of the onion. So there's my center. Minus 3 is next to it. There's the next layer. Okay, now I have to solve this. So let me write it up here so I have a little bit more space. Okay, how do I get rid of this layer minus 3 to, to peel to the variable? Well, to get rid of minus 3, I have to use the addition property of equality. I would add 3 to each side. Negative 3 plus 3 cancels, and I would have x equals negative 2. Now, I can quickly check my answer. I can plug negative 2 in for x, and negative 2 minus 3 does give me negative 5. You may use your calculator in this lesson. So you can see my work is matching the book work, and I'm getting the same answer. All right? I want you to pause the video right now and why don't you try these three questions. Put them in your notes. Okay, I'm back. So to, to get the correct work and answers to these. For the first one, think of an onion. Ends the center, the plus three is the next layer. I got to get rid of plus three first to get to n. So take away three the plus 3 minus 3 cancel, and you're left with n equals negative 10. Here, g is the center of the onion. The minus 1 third is the next layer. How do I get rid of that minus 1 third? I add a third to each side. That would give me g is negative 1 third for my answer. And then for the final question, p is the center of the onion, and the plus 3.9 next to it on the same side of the equal sign is the next layer. I got to get rid of that plus 3.9. Take it away from each side. P equals negative 10.4. You should always check your answer on a quiz. I know if you didn't check your answer, even if you don't, sh if you don't, you don't have to show me your, that you checked it on paper. Just put it in your calculator, check it. I'll know if you didn't check it. If you get the answer wrong, I know you didn't check it. Because if you had it wrong, you'd make an effort to change it. So make sure you check your answers. Much like adding and subtracting, we can solve linear equations by multiplying or dividing if those are the operations involved. The multiplication property of equality says if you multiply both sides of an equation by the same amount, you'll get an equivalent equation. Okay. Uh, a good example of that would be this problem here. N is the center of the onion. And I have 
I'll, I'll consider the negative down here with the 5. I have negative 5 in the denominator. That's the next layer. How do I get rid of divide by negative 5? I hope you're thinking, thinking to get rid of divide. You multiply. So you can see in the book work, here was the original problem in orange, so I'm kind of highlighting that here. Can you see in green, we are multiplying both sides of the equation by negative 5. So on the left, negative 5 and divide by negative 5 cancel out. So I have n on the left, and negative 5 times negative 3 is 15 on the right. The solution is 15. We also have a division property of equality. Dividing each side of an equation by the same num non-zero number will produce an equivalent equation. That would be an example of like this one. X is the center of the onion, and I have times pi next to it. I want to get rid of times pi. So to get rid of times pi, I divide by pi, which you can see in the work down here. There, I'll highlight it in green. They are dividing each side of the equation by pi. And on the left side, times pi divided by pi cancels, so I have x by itself. And on the right side, um, the pi's cancel, and I have negative 2. And that would be the solution. Remember, multiplication and division are inverse operations. They always undo each other. I want you to pause the video and you put these in your notes and try. Now think about this. If I'm having you put this in your notes, there's a good chance on an audit I could say, hey, you did this problem. What did it work out to? So again, you should try those. Okay, I'm back. So in number four, y is the center of the onion and divide by 3 is the next layer. Let's get rid of divide by 3. To, to get rid of divide, you should multiply. So multiply each side by 3. Divide by 3 and times 3 cancel. You have y on the left and negative 6 times 3 is negative 18 on the right. In the second problem, x is the center of the onion and pi, that times pi is the next layer. Divide each side by pi and you get x equals 9. And on number six, W is the center of the onion, and we're multiplying W by 0.05. Divide each side by 0.05. W equals 28. Always check your answer when you're done. We can use equation solving to solve real life problems. Now, when you do read a word problem, there's a four step approach to, to handling this. First of all, Make sure you understand the problem. What is the unknown? Now remember, if you don't know, that's your variable. So this would be your variable. This is your unknown. What information is given? What's being asked? Those are questions you should be asking yourself. Make a plan. This plan might involve one or more of the problem-solving strategies ch shown on the next page, which I'll get to in a minute. Solve the problem. Carry out your plan. Check that each step is correct. And then this is one I'd say is a big deal, and I see all the time in, in algebra, students aren't doing this, and you're smart. You just got to think about it. Examine your solution. Check that your solution makes sense. So many times I'm correcting quizzes and tests, and I'll have a question. I'm making up something here. Like, how much did your Slurpee cost at 7-Eleven? And people are turning in answers like $500. And they're not even thinking about it. You have to stop and ask, does my answer make sense? Here are some pr common problem solving strategies. I put check marks next to the ones that I really think are the best of the group. Use a verbal model. We talked about that in the introduction chapter. Drawing a picture or a diagram is very helpful if you get stuck. Write an equation, okay? Um, guess, check, and revise. In algebra, the more guessing you're doing in trial and error, the longer the problem's going to take. So I don't try to teach that. I mean, you can work them out, but the bottom line is it could take you hours. We want to get in the habit of using a verbal model, writing an equation, drawing pictures if we need to. Okay. 
we'll do one quick problem here and we'll stop the video. So like here would be a modeling with mathematics problem. So we're going to have to do a uh, problem solving techniques. On January 22nd, 1943, the temperature in Spearfish, South Dakota fell from 54 degrees Fahrenheit at 9 in the morning to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit at 9.27 in the morning. How many degrees did the temperature fall? Now, that's pretty amazing. Think about that. In 27 minutes, that must have been one heck of a cold front. The temperature dropped 58 degrees. I just gave away the answer, but that's amazing. But uh, let's say we didn't know that answer. Understand the problem. You know the temperature before and after the temperature fell. You are asked to find how many degrees the temperature fell. Make a plan. Use a verbal model. So let's do that. Okay. We knew the start temperature. So the start temperature minus the change should give us, I'll put Ft for final temperature, right? So my start temperature was 54. I'm taking away the change and I should end up with negative 4. There would be an equation I can solve. And you can see the book has the same equation as I do. They just use T instead of X. And they put the 54 minus T on the right and the negative 4 on the left. I'm doing the same thing. I just have it backwards. And now we can solve that. Okay, here's my onion. X is the center. I have 54 here. Now we got to be, this is a good example problem. We got to be careful. I'm going to add the opposite here. 54 is a positive. To get rid of a positive 54, I have to subtract. So I'm subtracting. So I have negative 1x, that negative sign would be like negative 1, equals negative 58. And then I can divide by negative 1, and I'm finding out the change in temperature was a 58 degree. I should put drop here to make it clear it fell that, but matching there, okay? I'm going to pause the video here. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in class.